Welcome to Liz McMullen's show. I have a returning guest, Jay, on the show. So it's good to have you here again. Good to be back. Thank you. <laughs> we were just joking before we started recording at um, the time difference, because it's 8 a.m. here, which is like, you know, really the crack of dawn for a night owl like me. And what time is it where you are? It's 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Chilling. So one of the things that, um, because we're going to talk about translating into German, but one of the things that you talked about in a time management book that you um, published was that you only check your email twice a day. Is that true? Uh, I try to. I try to follow my own advice. Um, Sometimes I don't manage, but those are the days when my productivity is ruined usually um, because as soon as I open my emails and then I got 50 new emails downloaded and then I don't get any writing done. So I, I try to start my day doing my own writing and then later in the day switch over to my editing part. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Uh, you do a lot of... Um you do a lot of editing and mentoring, and one of the things that I had asked you um, is when you first started writing, you decided that you were going to write in English because there w- weren't any established um, lesbian fiction communities in German, no beta readers, no editors and whatnot that you knew of. What was it like to start writing in German? Yeah, I mean, I... I started writing in German when I was 10 or so, so I wrote for a long time just for myself and my twin sister read whatever I wrote, but other than that, I I wrote for myself mainly. And um, once I started using the internet more and more, I got involved into um, the lesbian fiction community as a reader and I started reading mostly in English because there, there weren't many um, German stories around. And um, in the English language, there were huge archives full of fan fiction and other online stories. So, um, Did you start with fan fiction? Yeah. Um, I, I read whatever I discovered, um, not just fan fiction, also early versions of um, authors like L.J. Maas and, um, yeah, Whatever I could get my hands on, I, I, I read pretty much everything that was out there at the time. So German um, is so different language-wise than English because yes. most people who are possibly speaking another language are speaking a Romance language, and German is extremely different from that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what was it like to start writing in English? And then what are some of the challenges now that you're writing and translating into German? Um, at first, I was a little shy about writing in English and about sharing my work in English because I thought there are so many native speakers out there, so many stories written by native speakers. So I felt like I can't keep up with that. Um, But I had wonderful beta readers who were very encouraging. And um, so I started out with a few short stories and got really good feedback for them. And everyone was very encouraging. So I kept doing it. And um, I think it was easier going from German to English than now going back and translating after writing only in English for 10 years and then starting to translate my own work and and writing in German again, that for some reason was much harder for my poor brain than the other way around. What are some pitfalls that you encounter translating from English to German? Uh, The the hardest is um, translating sex scenes, um, which is what I spent my morning doing today and yesterday. Uh, And that's the hardest. As you said, um, the English language is so different from German. Um, the structure of the sentences is completely different. You can't use participles the way you do in English. So if you translate it word by word, it doesn't work. And the German language is not as flexible as the English language. It has fewer verbs. So in sex scenes, that's really, you're constantly stopping and, oh my God, how do I say this in German without sounding awkward? So, um, the love scenes are definitely a challenge. 
Uh, what about colloquialisms or uh, patterns of German writing and speaking? Yeah, the, the, those don't translate well either because um, the English language has a lot of little phrases and sayings that are based on sports, for example, baseball, like hitting it all out of the park or um, getting to first base and so on. And we, we don't even... Germans don't get baseball. I don't get baseball at all. Um, I know what it is, but I don't know the rules, and we don't have the same things, obviously. So um, these don't work. And the other thing that is very hard to translate is humor. If the characters are bantering back and forth, and my characters tend to do that a lot, and humor is often based on puns and plays on words. So... They don't translate well, so what I do is I don't translate my own work word for word because that doesn't work. I know which effect I wanted to achieve, and I go for achieving that same effect, maybe with a different joke or a different wordplay, so otherwise it wouldn't work. What's your fan response to the German language versions of your work? Um, it's been really great. Um, you, you have to know that the German market is not as big as the English language um, lesbian fiction market. So there are not that many books around. Um, so readers are really eagerly awaiting my next book. Um, I get messages all the time. When's the next one coming out? Even so, I just had one out three weeks ago. <laughs> Yeah, readers are yeah. impatient like that. Where is yeah. it? Where is it? Well, it's going to take me a while to write another one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, writing is not as fast as reading, so it takes a while. So now um, you you under you identify as an international writer. Right? Yeah, I would say so. Um, it's it's great to be able to do both and not to be, let's say, limited to just one language. Um, and to be able to reach a broader audience by using both languages, um, which is really great. And I'm not sure I would trust another... I mean, we have great translators at ILVA. It's not bad, but I'm pretty territorial about my books and my characters. So <laughs> um, it's, it's great that I, that I get to translate my own work and not have to rely on someone else to do it for me. So you only translate your own work? Um, I've translated one other novella um, for a critique partner of mine, um, but I would rather just stick with my own work because it's um, I'm not really a translator. So um, by now, I'm, I think I'm pretty good at it, but um, I would rather just... I, I have too much to do just with my own books. Um, I haven't yet translated all of them, so I'm slowly working my way through my backlist and... I think of my 14 novels, I am now translating number nine. So, uh, I've, I've always been curious about this. This doesn't have to do with um, uh, translating. How did the name Elva come up? Uh, like, what is that something in a different language? I was like, yeah. I, okay. Yeah, it is. It's, um, I think it's Swedish. It's a Swedish name. Um, um, Astrid, um, who's the owner of Ilva, um, when we were brainstorming names for the new publishing house, um, we wanted something that represents kind of, we want to be a group, we want to be a community, um, and Ilva is Swedish and means female wolf. Oh! Um, yeah, so we, we wanted to have a pack, so to say, um, and also, I mean, wolves are, they're pretty intelligent, they are really great at survival and um, yeah they are very intelligent and they have they have independence but at the same time they also have these social bonds and that's what we wanted that's really cool mm -hmm. that's really cool so uh, you and I were talking on email about how quality lesbian fiction is polished which includes line editing uh, copy editing and of course proofreading and that's something that you also have to find for your German language books yeah. and when you first started you said it was hard to find editors and beta readers in German how has that improved and how 
difficult has it been to find people to play those roles with your translated works? Mm. Yeah, in the German market, it was a little bit more difficult to find really good editors. Um, but we started slow um, and really were picky about the books that we translated because translations are very expensive. Um, so to make sure the book is really working, we had to pick well. And um, we also looked um, not just in the lesbian, lesbian community for, for good translators and good editors. And um, by now we are pretty well known. So now people come to us and um, send us their job applications. Um, and we, I mean, I am um, in the English um, speaking market. I'm one of the senior editors. Um, Ilva has a German senior editor and an English senior editor. So we do editing tests to make sure that we really have the best editors um, because everyone can call themselves editor no matter what their skill level might be. And so we do extensive um, screening to make sure we really have the best stuff. What are some of the concerns that other authors have when using a translator? Yeah, I mean... If you're, let's say, you're an indie author, um, and if you hire, you can hire a translator, um, but then you will not know how good the translation is because you don't speak the foreign language and cannot check. So you will have to have someone you can trust who speaks that language um, at a level of a native speaker and can tell you, is it really readable for a native speaker, or is it just like putting your story into Google Translator and um, hoping for the best. Um, but what about Elva authors that are having their work translated? I, I haven't heard from anyone who has these concerns and they don't need to because um, we have in all the languages, we, we don't just translate into German. Um, we have uh, also two books out in um, Italian and we will by the end of the year also have a French book. And in all of these languages, um, because we are an international publisher, we have people who speak that language and can tell us how good did the translator work, how good was the editing, and everything gets double-checked. So our authors can really trust that um, we have a system in place um, that makes sure that we are putting out a quality product, not just in English, but in other languages as well. What are some things that you'd like people to know about Elva as a publishing company? Um, I mean, they can visit the website, of course. Elva is um, ylva-publishing.com. Um, um, check us out. We are a pretty international publishing house, very diverse. Um, when it comes to our authors, we have authors pretty much on every continent. Um, the editors are also from every continent because we allow our authors to write in their native language, which means an author from the UK doesn't need to write in American English or the other way around. So, um, and I think our books also have that international flavor a lot of the time. Um, so I get a lot of feedback that our books are sometimes a little different. Um, also, we have a large diversity when it comes to lesbian fiction subgenres. Uh, it's not just romance, it's, we have great science fiction authors like Fletcher Delancey, um, we have Young Adult, we have um, this month we have uh, crime fiction and mystery months um, with authors like Andrea Bramhall. And, um, yeah. how, how do you find your audience? Um, we do a lot of social media marketing um, because with ebooks, most people, those readers are best um, reached online. Um, so we have a social media expert who does a lot of um, marketing and promotion for us online. We also, I mean, we are everywhere. We are all the continents, so we go to local events. Um, there are a lot of brides um, that our authors uh, attend um, in the UK. Uh, the U UK meet is coming up, and Astrid and her wife are traveling there next month. We just had an event um, in June on Lesbos, the Greek island, um, which was really great. I mean, beach, sun, books was great. 
<laughs> so you didn't have to twist anybody's arm for that one for sure. Yeah, no, and it's it's uh, we want to do it every year. So um, yeah, and I think next year is going to be bigger. That this was our first year, so it was but it was fun, fun event. Yeah. So and yeah, as you know, I was also at the GCLS, so we have we try to have a presence everywhere. Um, while still focusing on what is really important, which is putting out good books because that's the best marketing. So just some uh, final questions. Have you thought about writing in German? Because you you had said that you write in English first and then translate into your native language. Have you Have you ever gotten ideas or inspiration to start straight off in German rather than in English? I learned to never say never um, <laughs> <laughs> because I used to say no and then I yeah, later changed my mind. But I actually don't think so. Um, I wouldn't totally rule it out, but by now my brain is kind of switched over when it comes to fiction writing to English and it's much easier to write in English and translate it back into my own language than the other way around. I mean, that's how a professional translator works too. They always translate into their own language from Why? a foreign language. Because it's, it's, it's easier. It's easier for the brain um, because if you do it the other way around, then you have a harder time finding the right words. You know your own language better, so finding words that are equivalent of what you want to say is easier in your own language. Thank you so much for coming on the show because I, I actually dragged you on because I saw you posting on Facebook about translating. And I was like, I think my audience might be curious about how that works. So I appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, it was a pleasure.